This December in Paris, we have a historic opportunity to reach a global agreement on protecting our climate. We've quite simply run out of superlatives to describe the significance of climate change as a threat to humanity. We've gone beyond all last chances and are just left holding onto a hope that these talks will exceed expectations and that world leaders will respond to the needs of current and future generations. The 21st United Nations Conference of the Parties, or COP21, is a hugely important opportunity to speed up the transformation to a low carbon future. We've waited so long for a deal. Is there any cause for hope this time around? With COP reaching 21, will world leaders be mature enough to clear the blocks to progress this time? In fact, I'm reasonably optimistic that we will get a deal in Paris. There have been a number of hopeful signals this year which suggest that tackling climate change has risen up the political agenda. In June, Pope Francis published his encyclical calling on global leaders and individuals to dedicate themselves to curbing climate change. In August, Islamic leaders issued a declaration calling on 1.6 billion Muslims to phase out greenhouse gases by 2050, which has put a huge pressure on the oil producing states of the Gulf. And at a UN conference in October, some 150 countries, representing about 90% of global carbon emissions, filed pledges offering to curb their emissions. But we know the stakes are high. We urgently need world leaders to reach a legally binding agreement on cutting greenhouse gas emissions so that global warming can be limited to under two degrees. This year is likely to be the warmest on record and the Hadley Center recently announced that the planet has already warmed by one degree since pre-industrial times. We're already, we're already halfway to that critical two degrees. More worrying still, with business as usual, the planet is on course to hit around four degrees of warming by the end of the century. The impacts of climate change are being felt in all parts of the world, and my own constituency of the southwest of England is no exception. Between 1961 and 2006, the region has seen average daily temperatures increase by almost one and a half degrees. Winter rainfall has increased by over 15%, and summers have become 10% drier. Sea levels are rising, which is a key concern to us in the southwest, and they're likely to be 26 to 29 centimetres higher around our coasts by 2050 compared to 1991. Figures are one thing, but it's people's lives and the environment they live in that really counts. In recent years, we've seen severe flooding in the southwest, damaging homes and livelihoods disrupting crucial road and rail infrastructure and causing emotional trauma. We've witnessed storm surges washing away parts of our icon iconic coastline. As our climate becomes increasingly disrupted by higher temperatures, we are likely to see impacts on our tourism industry through coastal change, impacts on health such as increased likelihood of heat stroke and skin cancers, particularly for the elderly. And climate change will affect the wealth of the natural world, impacting on the availability of water and changing natural habitats and landscapes. So what will Europe bring to the table in Paris? The European Parliament has adopted a mandate for its delegation to COP21, which calls for a 40% cut in greenhouse gas emissions, a 40% improvement in energy efficiency, and a 30% target for renewable energy by 2030. This is not as ambitious as green demands. We were asking for a 60% reduction in emissions by 2030, but we very much welcome the commitment to phase out fossil fuels completely by 2050, a momentous recognition by the parliament I am a member of that we need to evolve beyond the era of fossil fuels. But COP21 must agree more than targets and pledges. We will need to see some concrete policies to make the reductions in emissions real. We need to see a complete transformation to the way our economy works in a relatively short space of time. As Greens, we want to see 100% renewable energy by 2050 and an end to fossil fuel subsidies with investments redirected towards creating a green economy. 
We know that the Southwest can demonstrate this transformation. Earlier this year, I commissioned a report on the potential for renewable energy in the region. It concluded that we could produce more than 100% of all our energy needs from renewables, creating 122,000 new quality jobs in the process and adding £14 billion to the regional economy. As, in, as individuals, we can all be part of this transformation through the lifestyle choices we make and how we invest our money. But at this crucial moment, ahead of the COP21 negotiations, we must make our voices heard. We must show our elected representatives at local, national and European level that we want firm action on climate change. Write to them, sign petitions, attend local events, join a march. Do whatever it takes to make them take notice. The earth is on loan to us from future generations. We have a duty to safeguard it and pass it back to them in a habitable state. The next few weeks will decide whether we are worthy of such a responsibility.